Good afternoon, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Saturday, December 14th, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Winter storm warning, 8 to 20 inches with locally higher amounts exceeding 2 feet in my area. And that storm system is going to be moving east, bringing more snow to the northeast. Keep calm. It's boom time. New CMIP data suggests that you are here and you're repeating cycles back to 1913. And we're going to get to that. Solar cycle minimum 24 continuing. Forecasters monitoring potential for major winter storm that could impact Colorado to Maine. It's insane. Wintery storm will unleash snow, ice, and rain as it marches across 2,000 miles of the U.S. Bringing with it snow. Here's your AccuWeather local Storm Max trademark 15 inch in Kansas City in the bullseye. Look at the wishbone over here at Denver. I'm down on this part of the wishbone. This snow system is going to move all the way east, bringing snow all the way through Maine, 6 to 12 inches in the darker blue regions. And here's your winter storm warnings and watches Sunday through Tuesday from Denver to Ottawa. And that pink zone is going to be the mix region where you're looking at ice and other terrible things. There's the early week outlook. That cold air is going to be continuing to plunge in the center of the U.S., pushing down to the nexus of the Schmexus, Texas. It's true. Now, let's talk about December snow climatology in Huntsville's historic snow events. And yes... It has snowed on Christmas Day, but Huntsville International Tuesday, most snow ever recorded in history. A cold front pushed through the Tennessee Valley December 10th, dumping as much as 0.7 inches of snow at Huntsville International Airport and 2 inches of snow in higher elevations in the Cumberland Plateau. The most snow to occur in the region total since the winter of 2015. But data below shows you that there is no global warming and that massive snows happened back in the 60s and in the 20s and 30s where events of five and six inches of snow are more regular. Look at this back here. That's a lot. And now it almost looks as if we're repeating that situation. Coming back into another pattern. See the spikes moving up? Now take, check out the snow conditions up here in Minnesota and Michigan. 20 plus inches on the ground, December 13th. And we're going to get to the forecast analyzer in a minute. Heavy continental divide snow overnight with a few flurries expected in the morning across the Pikes Peak region. You're looking at 3 to 6, 5 to 9. Alien Allen, where are you? Canyon City, 3 to 6. Salida, 5 to 8. So lots of snow east of the continental divide. Heads up. Cold shot to bring snow back to the northeast. A blast of cold air behind a potent storm system will return snowy conditions to parts of the northeast to start the weekend. The storm that brought locally heavy rainfall to parts of the northeast on Friday will continue to push through the region Saturday, which is Saturday here, by the way. And you can see that system, and we're going to get to that. So let's check out the snowfall analyzer. Last 48 hours, there's very little snow in the northeast. Big winter up here. Come down, check this region here while I hover over for snow amounts. In uh, Wisconsin, we're looking at eight inches over broad regions. The big winter is Denver, where regions uh, in the mountains here are picking up 24 and up in the northern area up to 36 inches. And this snow pattern is going to continue, and we'll watch it. Widespread wintry weather continues from the central Rockies to the northeast. Where am I? There we go. A winter storm will track slowly from the central Rockies to the lower Mississippi Valley by Monday before strengthening and shifting into the northeast by Tuesday. Heavy snow will continue over the central Rockies in the Sunday. A swath of mixed wintry precipitation, including snow and freezing rain, will cause hazardous travel from the central plains into the northeast Saturday and Monday. That will not be a fun day. Let's check out the snowfall totals. Heading into Christmas or holiday season, whatever you want to say. You can see there's the storm here in the Four Corners region that's going to be dumping snow through Monday. And then that system will move east, bringing snow from Arkansas, Kansas, Indiana, Ohio, 
Pennsylvania in the mountains of, wow, it's going to be a white winter. <laughs> and it's going to be deep, no matter what they claimed years ago. California governor rejects $3.5 billion PG&E settlement with wildfire victims. Now, this Newsom guy has good reason to because PG&E just wants to not go bankrupt and settle out. They do not want to prevent more forest fires. And the governor, of all things, wants a proposal that not only pays the fire victims money, but also prevents future fires. Imagine that. Common sense. New Orleans declares state of emergency following cyber attack. This isn't the only city in recent days to declare a state of emergency from a cyber attack. Sign of the times. Seismic update. No quakes of note. I'm sure this 3.2 northwest of Chalice, Idaho, is uh, getting some of the Yellowstone fear mongers all riled up. But that's absolutely normal activity. Nothing to report. Scientists have discovered the deepest point on land, two miles below sea level, blowing, obliterating Death Valley. Hello. Now, this area right here, this little blue line in the northeastern part of Antarctica on this map is now the deepest land on Earth, which is two miles below sea level. Yeah, and this is an area below a glacier, the Denman Glacier, and I have a blow up here for you. This slot is about half as wide as the Grand Canyon and half as long, but twice as deep. It's about two miles deep. The Grand Canyon is a little over a mile deep and 20 kilometers wide by 100 kilometers long. Now, these features form due to the weight of ice over top. So there was a glacier here and it continued to build and then that slot continued to deepen. <laughs> it's part of the process of isostatic or isostasy and isostatic rebound. So when if you were to remove that glacier, that two mile deep hole would come straight up. And it's part of the mountain building process in my eyes. Also part of the crustal slip theory by Charles Hapgood, and we'll be discussing this at LeakCon in great detail because it's very important part to the puzzle in unraveling the last catastrophe. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have uh, the Aleutians are kicking it up a notch. We've got Shishaldin exploding <coughs> just moments ago where the alert level has been raised to orange. There you can see the puff on the sat image. A short-lived explosion occurred at the volcano yesterday and produced an ash cloud 20 to 25,000 feet, which drifted west-northwest, the AVO reported. Ash emissions can be seen from the sat images. And also we have Kuchiskov blowing to around the same height, 20,000 feet. So, there's that up in the Aleutians. Big volcano bump unlike anything seen before found on the moon. Well, that's because they do not have electricity in the in the toolbox of the geologists yet. Some do, like here, and there are some electric geologists that are around plasma geologists or electric universe geologists, like myself, that know we have a long way to go. But did you know as early as July of 1913, we were well aware of what volcanic eruptions do to the climate on Earth? And here I'll just read you, volcanic dust and other factors in the production of climate changes and their possible relations to ice ages by Humphreys, 1913. In these papers, the conclusion is reached that volcanic dust in the high atmosphere decreases the intensity of solar radiation in the lower atmosphere, and therefore the average temperature of the Earth substantially, as theory indicates, a priori that it should, and that effect has been clearly traced back to 1750 or to the time of the earliest reliable records. Hence, it is safe to say that such a relation between volcanic dust in the upper atmosphere and the average temperature of the lower atmosphere always has obtained, and therefore that volcanic dust must have been a factor, possibly a very important one, in the production of many, perhaps all, past climate changes. This is genius. 
because what you're looking at is the current overlay model that this graphical I made where they, you have solar variations here overlaid on temperature anomalies with volcanic eruptions, all the major volcanic eruptions over the last 800 years. And if you cannot see a direct correlation between low solar activity and then vo large volcanic eruptions and then large drops in the temperature, then you're not looking at this graph. Do you see it? UN climate talks in Madrid have stalled. Countries are blaming the US. Well, at least we're doing something good. Deep solar minimum on the verge of a historic milestone. Now, if you read this excellent article, it gives you some background information and it basically says we are on the threshold of repeating the cycle back in 1913. We have arrived at the same part, a repetition of a recurring theme by our sun is being repeated this cycle. It's anyone's guess where we'll be next cycle. It'll be way back here, past centennial minimum standards. But 97% of climate scientists agree that they only have 18 months to save their jobs. And it has everything to do with the sun. And the fact that climate models over the last three decades have been purposely skewed by the UN and the IPCC to fit their agenda. And scientists, are, some of us, are sick of it. And the tides are changing. The tides are shifting. And they don't have much time. The deserts are greening from the CO2 rising. And this is becoming obvious. And the humpback whales are bouncing back from the verge of extinction from 450 to over 25,000. And let's not even get started about polar bears. And let's look at this amazing man, the man who invented the internet, Al Got No Rhythm Gore. Ten years ago today, or maybe yesterday, <laughs> Al Gore predicted that the North Pole would be completely ice-free in five years. Ten years ago today, the North Pole. Who is he? Santa, Santa Claus? I mean, what is he talking about? The North Pole. So here at the North Pole, where there's always ice, every single month of the year, except back in like 1920 when it was ice-free. Isn't that weird? Back in the 1920s, and maybe even the 30s, this region was ice-free. Hmm. But today, the entire Arctic region is covered in ice. And we are still <laughs> one, two, three, four months from peak ice. And the entire Arctic is covered in ice. Half of the Arctic is covered in three meters of ice. Yep, half of the Arctic is covered in three meters of ice. Now, drum circles put pharmaceutical antidepressants to shame. These are, this is some of the information that's been hidden from you, specifically by the pharmaceutical industry. So read the article if you want to heal. Phase one clinical trials for magic mushroom psilocybin show no adverse effects. None. Also good news on the natural medicine front. Thousands of penis fish washed ashore on a California beach. And I don't even want to get into it. I had a nightmare. So that's, there's that. And this page isn't working, but it should be because it's awesome. So let's hopefully get here. Let me just click on some of this stuff here that we're about to watch. Archaeology dig in Spain yields prehistoric crystal weapons. Now, there's, there's a problem with this article, and I want you all to read it. <coughs> These crystal daggers, in fact... The entire cachet of clear crystal objects, including everything, tools, including needles and scrapers and bird points, and daggers, were not buried with the with the three thousand year old burial. Now, this is a five thousand year old site, and the people that were buried in the site were buried with flint arrowheads 
These were buried separately. It's my opinion that these are left over from a much, much ancient, much further back time. Probably before the catastrophe. And then these were found and they had been passed down for thousands of years. Kind of as an encyclopedia. Just amazing the amount of lies we've been fed. Beautiful. Now more BS. A new study shows an animal's lifespan is written in the DNA. And humans are only supposed to live 38 years. According to the study. Here's the study. Humans only supposed to live 38 years. Because they want your life expectancy to shorten. Because they are culling the population. But you're only alive now, this moment. Don't let it bother you. Go outside and look up. You only have one opportunity. Miss out because I got the cloud. Oh, just do it. Go outside and do it. Do something. Look up, stare right in the moon. You're allowed to. And now, some amazing information that we want to share with you now in love. All these kids going on strike, whining in the streets about the world coming to an end. A conclusion based on classroom propaganda and gobsmacking ignorance, which prompted this piece that someone sent to me. I thought I'd share it with you. It's called Growing Up. Few commentaries on this global warming hoax have had greater relevance than this. I think I might send it to Al Gore. And it says this, to all the school kids going on strike for climate change, you're the first generation who've required air conditioning in every classroom. You want TV in every room and your classes are all computerised. You spend all day and night on electronic devices. More than ever, you don't walk or ride bikes to school, but you arrive in caravans of private cars that choke suburban roads and worsen rush hour traffic. You're the biggest consumers of manufactured goods ever and update perfectly good, expensive luxury items to stay trendy. Your entertainment comes from electric devices. Furthermore, the people driving your protests are the same people who insist on artificially inflating the population growth through immigration, which increases the need for energy, manufacturing and transport. The more people we have, the more forest and bushland we clear, the more of the environment that's destroyed. How about this? Tell your teachers to switch off the aircon, walk or ride to school, switch off your devices and read a book, make a sandwich instead of buying manufactured fast food. No. None of this will happen because, the piece says, your selfish, badly educated, virtue-signalling little turds inspired by the adults around you who crave a feeling of having a noble cause while they indulge themselves in Western luxury and unprecedented quality of life. The piece ends by saying, wake up, grow up and shut up until you're sure of the facts before protesting. Lovely. At all check it out. At all these kids going on strike. And uh, check come over here to Mountain Bear and give them a thumbs up and subscribe. Tell them Diamond sent you or her. I don't know. Just an awesome piece. I want to thank all of our supporters, all our one-time donors, and everyone that shares this video. We can't do it without you. Preparewiththeranch.com for long-term survival food at My Patriot Supply. Prepare with the ranch.com makes a great gift. You can send people the gift of preparedness. We love you. Be safe.